Hey everybody, welcome to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. And we know you like what you saw from down in Miami. Dan Fates was down there. Hey Dan, let's start with this. How's the weather? Um, I got the entire 48 hour experience of the Miami weather. Look, it was about triple digits on the field pregame. The Bills sideline baking in the sun and then in the third quarter the skies opened up. It was pretty much like I was taking a shower in the third quarter. Big heavy raindrops and then it's it's all gone. So yeah, yeah a, a, a whole Miami day of weather in 48 hours. All right, but let's get to the game, right? Because there was thought that maybe the Bills wouldn't be ready to play in that weather. And the way the defense came out and got after Tua Tunga Vailoa with blitzes, bringing the secondary, I think that set the tone for the whole game. Mike, they blitzed more today, especially in the first quarter, than I have ever seen a Leslie Frazier defense blitz in Buffalo. I don't know what you saw, but Taron Johnson flying off the side. Trey White blitzed a couple times. Micah Hyde had a sack. Like, there were Bills players coming from every single angle. And for a Sean McDermott team that is usually just rush the front four and cover, that was not the case today. They were sending guys time after time, confusing the Dolphins' offensive line, confusing Tua, confusing Jacoby Brissett. It was impressive to see just missiles coming one after another at the Dolphins' quarterback. All right, let's highlight a few guys who played really well on defense. And you just mentioned them. We expect it from Poyer. We expect it from Hyde. Taron Johnson, I thought, was one of the best players on the field today. Another strong performance from him. Mike, he plays with zero regard for his own health and body. He flies around like a missile. He has come up with big plays. He is a true nickel corner. We were asked uh, Poyer and Hyde about him after the game. The question was phrased was, Taron Johnson. And then they interrupted him and said, best nickel corner in the league. The dude is a beast. That is how good and how much respect he has from his teammates. He was impressive again today, blitzing in coverage, a uh, couple big pass breaks up, kind of laying the hit stick to kind of break up some more plays. He it, it, He's impressive because he's not the first name you think of. Yeah. You think of Trey White, you think of Poyer, you think of Hyde, you think of Tremaine Edmonds. You don't think of Darren Johnson, but just a massive impact the first two weeks, really, because I thought he played well against the Steelers as well. And another guy who I thought had a great game today, and look, I'm, I'm not doing this to get on Tremaine Edmonds, who ended up leaving the game for a while, but it's the kind of game I want to see from Edmonds because it was impactful and big plays. And that's Matt Milano all over the field, picked up that one fumble on the strip. He and Taron Johnson together. I thought Milano was great today. I mean, can we say it again? He's the most important player on the Bills defense. He's not the most talented. He's not the best player. He's the most important player on that team on the defensive side. And he was gassed before he had that fumble and really kind of swung that momentum back in the Bills' favor, he was sucking wind, and he was absolutely gassed, and the Bills' defense was on the field for a long time when it was really hot, and he came up and made a big play. So, again, he a, a, just another strong showing from him and, and shows his value to this defense. Uh, I thought A.J. Epinesa looked really good. I mean, if you're Brandon Bean, you're looking at your last two defensive ends, first round and second round, both Rousseau and Epinesa making plays today. Mike, I, I couldn't agree more. I think Rousseau gets maybe the headline. Maybe we think of him more because he had the two sacks. A.J. Epinesa was the most disruptive player on the Bills' defense today. He had more of a factor. He was causing sacks for other people. Even Justin Zimmer had a sack. But they were all off of A.J. Epinesa's rushes. I thought he was the maybe the best defensive lineman today, but Rousseau will get all the talk coming home and getting his first two career sacks, but I thought Epinesa was an absolute monster today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, let's go to the other side of the ball. Look, Josh Allen has been a great player for this team. He made some plays today, but we haven't seen the 2020 Josh Allen yet. W what do you think it is? Well, I think we still need to have a little bit of a pump the brakes on what's wrong. The Steelers secondary is really good and the Dolphins have the two highest paid corners in the league. So he's facing so far two of the best off or defensive units in the secondary. So I think we need to give them a little bit of a break there. But I, I think he started to find a little bit more rhythm. And again, the ground game worked out today, Mike. I, I didn't expect that where the Bills kind of imposed their will 
you know, I, I think you've always talked about how the running game can wear a defense down and kind of be demoralizing. I think that was a big key today. What do you think? I'm just stunned that you are talking up the running game. You love the running game. I don't love the running game, Mike. It worked today. After the game, we, we joked around that uh, Sean McDermott was asked how impressed he was the fact that they could win in different ways. Obviously, their passing game is what Brandon Bean calls their fastball. That's what he does. And he was, Sean McDermott was asked, what's it like to kind of win with some off-speed pitches and kind of change it up? And McDermott smiled and said, not a big baseball guy, but yeah, you know, you kind of got to be able to do it all. I thought that was an excellent point. Uh, to be able to win with, you know, you, you always talk about with starters you, you, in baseball. When you don't have your A game, can you still get a win? The Bills have shown today they can win dominantly even when Josh Allen is okay. Yeah. He was better. He was okay. Not great. Yeah, I, I thought that was the case. I mean, Diggs made a few plays for him. It was a very Josh play for that first touchdown throw when he rolled right and threw it left. Dawson Knox has been good doing it that way. But you mentioned that ground game, and here's Zach Moss. So take us through Zach Moss from last week when he wasn't on the field. He was a healthy scratch. Yeah, wasn't on the field. And then the first thing he said today was when he sat down at the podium was just how emotional the last 24 hours have been. He said he buried his aunt on Saturday, was at the services, comes here, and early in the game has a fumble. I wouldn't say a back-breaking fumble, but a, a fumble that gave the Dolphins momentum back a little bit. And he had, he had a fumble last year uh, in a primetime game and was benched the rest of the game. Sean McDermott sat him down. Instead, Moss went up to all of the linemen. Deion Dawkins said he came up to him and said, I'm not going to have that happen again. Like, give me the ball back. And he did. And he had two rushing touchdowns, Mike, that weren't pretty. Like, Devin Singletary's touchdown run, untouched, pretty. Zach Moss was in two car accidents and got into the end zone. That was what I think they want to do, it, it, to have him be that power back. And it shows a lot about the trust that Sean McDermott has in him to give the ball back to him after the early fumble. Yeah, um, he had said, I remember being at the Combine and him saying he wants to be the kind of runner that forces defensive players to make a business decision where you don't want to go head-to-head -head with Zach yeah. Moss. Uh, he gave one of those hits today before he took it in the end zone. All right, let's wrap this up talking in, in more general terms about where this team now is after two games. It is so games. muggy, Mike. How muggy? How is it still so muggy? <laughs> it's Miami. I, 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 the sun's not even up, and it's still just so muggy. Yes, it is muggy. All right, where are they now? Two games in, 1-1, one 1-0 and one, one and oh in the division. Where do you think this team is now getting ready to come home for Washington? I think you have to look at this in a positive way of saying that you're one and one, one and oh in the division, like you said, and the offense still isn't really clicking. Like Josh still left some plays out there that were there. Now, some of the receivers may be having a little bit of trouble getting open right now, but I think you can still say that, that you can win in different ways. I, I think that's what people always wanted to see, right? They wanted the offense to be more balanced. They didn't want my offensive game plan, which is throw the ball 65 times because that's what the NFL is. They showed balance. This defense where last year was giving up 30 yards a game. They're the 30 points a game. Now they're the one pitching a shutout yeah. against – you know, obviously he was a backup quarterback, but but I think it shows signs that this team can win in different ways. That's what everybody wanted to say because, Mike, you know, in, in the playoffs, you got to be able to stop the run. And, you know, when conditions get tough, you, you can't always throw the ball in, in January, right? This is a team now that looks like Devin Singletary looked pretty good for two games. Yeah. Zach Moss showed, you know, some goal line carries. I think that this is an encouraging sign that you can sit back and go, okay, one and one. Week one, they laid an egg. They bounced back like good teams should and really kind of demoralized a division rival to say, this is still our, our division, guys. Yeah. I mean, the truth is the Bills have dominated Miami. I don't think they have a ton of respect, and I mean from a football sense, in the Miami offense. That team's got to do something about that offense because they're not going to be able to compete with the Bills, especially the way the Bills' defense played. And we're nitpicking a little bit here on things and they just won 35 to nothing in the second game of the year. So they will take that. Hey, Dan. But, Mike, it almost feels like they, they should have won by, by 52. Yeah. Like, when it was 14 to nothing at halftime, you, you tweeted out that it was the worst <laughs> 14 to nothing lead at a halftime in Bill's history. Yeah, it was. But they ended up making it 35. All right, Dan, here's what I'm going to tell you. 
Go to the hotel, get a shower, have a beer, relax. You earned it today. And by the way, when you get up in Miami on Monday morning, it's still going to be humid. It's unbelievable. <laughs> we'll see you back in Rochester soon. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for being with us here on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Again, make sure to subscribe, comment, like, let us know what you think. After the Bills win, we'll have plenty of coverage all week long. For Dan Fates and Jenna Cottrell, I'm Mike Catalana. Thanks for watching.